Hello, everybody. I'm outside today. It's only like 40 some degrees and I can't actually tell what's recording uh, on the picture because it just looked like a whole bunch of light uh, that it was trying to focus on. So I apologize if that's all you're seeing, but I can tell you I was led out here by the Holy Spirit. So when I saw this big beam of light that was in the camera, it didn't actually surprise me. Uh, attempting to open a cough drop because I realize I'm likely going to be needing that. He has some things to say. And I realize this message may not be to everybody because, well, I mean, it'll be to everybody he just said, but at the same time, He's wanting to address anybody who has been called by him to proceed in any kind of way, shape, or form to help other individuals under or behind them or even beside them, which would otherwise be called a leadership role in some way, shape, or form, a mentor role, an elder role, etc., and so on. And he just said, I'm not talking about one or two people here or there. He's talking about, did I call you to assist my body? Because if I called you to assist my body, my desire is that you will be affecting more than one or two people. Because he does not call people to leadership to serve his entire body the entire body of Christ. There are people he has called to serve the entire body of Christ. Wherever he has need, you go. What he has need of for you to speak, you speak. You are moved by the Holy Spirit. He said, let's stop right there. I have a lot of my people who are moving themselves. When I initiate a move, they're either ignoring me or they can't hear me, and yet they're initiating their own moves. So he said, that's something that needs to be addressed. Whose topic are we preaching on? Are we listening to the Holy Ghost and what he has to say and what his topic is? Because I can tell you, as he pulled me out of all these other people's zooms and meetings and lives and all these other things he says now now we're going to deal with just what i want to talk about janet because i have very few vessels who will do that like this at this admonishing today many want to speak on the the positive fun things that they want to explore of me and do you know that my very own leadership boxes me in because they're only coming after what they want to receive for me from me. That's all they want is what they, their topic, what interests them, what they think that this is all about. And he said, I've, I have need. I don't, re I don't know if you guys realize is what he said, that I have need of a plethora of people out there who have absolutely zero idea what a priest is, let alone the priesthood, has zero idea of how to walk in the spirit, has zero idea how to be sanctified and consecrated unto me, and really doesn't even understand repentance. So it's quite presumptuous of you to jump to the conclusion that all I am doing is trying to prepare the upper echelon of a priesthood. I was, I was listening to two things this morning before he came over me so heavy that by the time I got done with the second video, he said, we, you and I are going to speak outside. He won't even let me do this inside because of how, how very, very upset he is about this because it's going to be very loud and, and there are other people in the house. One video that was sent to me was on Yeshua is about to catch people up. There's going to be a catching up of those who are ready. He's going to catch us up. He's going, he's going to recommission us. He's going to transfigure us in different ways. And he's going to put us back down on this earth to do the great commission in the, in the final and big fat harvest. That was really good. But again, that video was talking about walking in the spirit and how there's a need for us to be walking in the spirit now before we're trying to test out our sea legs with something we ain't never done before because now all of a sudden he's caught us up and we're expected to be moving in the spirit, which we were called to move in here on earth already. So that frustrated him a little bit, but he was very, very pleased in Camille Hedricks because she's the one that brought that forth. 
She did what she was called to do. And then I watched Doug Barrett's video, and I watched and I watched and I watched, and he got more and more upset. He said, Janet, revelation is just revelation if they do not know what to do with it. If they cannot understand and it's not translatable to the, the, the majority of the body by far and wide, it is pointless. So your job, child, as well as the rest of my leadership's job is to break it down into bites that they can handle and do and apply. He said, revelation is revelation. How many people have the book of revelation and still don't know what to do with it in this time and age? Revelation is just revelation, sweet child, unless you're going to break it down into bitefuls that the people can chew on and apply, it is pointless. And then Doug said something else while the Lord was, was, was working up his message here. And he said, Paul was the Pharisee of Pharisees. And he said, bingo, that's what I'm talking about. I got a lot of Pharisees that are called and chosen who are simply doing their own, what they want to do, what they think should be spoken on, and they're not actually being led by the Holy Spirit right now. <laughs> he said, do you know I have need of teaching? I have a great need of teachers in this earth. And do you know that many of them want to be prophets, apostles, even pastors or evangelists, but very few of them want to teach. And they say this to my face. I don't want to do that because there's high accountability to that. He said, do you think there's not high accountability to any office I call you in, which is why I'm going to admonish all of them right now. I have a need for teaching. If you're an apostle, you ought to be a teacher too. If you're a prophet, you ought to be being led by the Holy Ghost. So let's start talking about whose topics are we talking on right now. If you're a pastor, you ought to care about my sheep and you ought to be feeding them bitefuls that they can digest and heed. If you're an evangelist, you do, do you or do you not have a heart after me to absolutely love and honor me and to sit at my feet and serve me because I'm not seeing this being done because I got a lot of people who are out there wanting to teach. He said, but what I'm seeing is preaching. Let me preach to you what, what, what these, these downloads I got from God were. They're, all they're doing is preaching them. There is absolutely no ability to apply this to the people's lives. They do not have someone who is walking them from point A to B to C to D, all through it, leading them as I lead them. When I teach, I mentor them. So he looked at me and he said, your messages, every one of them, I told you from the beginning that I was going to have you ABC123 easy for people to understand. Now, whether they're going to step into that and walk into it is on their own. That's for them and me to walk out. But you're going to make it as clear as possible for these people to use it. Otherwise, I have no need of anything that you're going to do in this earth. He's very clear about that. And he, say, he says, I say that to every one of my other people who are out there making videos and posts right now. If you are not going to walk them through the process of how do you walk in the spirit, how do you do these things, it's pointless for you to be preaching on the topic of what I've revealed. He said, because what you'll find is a whole bunch of people going, yeah, he told me that the other day. What you will find is that you're preaching to the people who are already getting the same messages from me. They're only getting an affirmation from you. I have no need of that. He said, Janet, I can do that on my own. So why are we going to preach only to an upper echelon of people who are already walking in to a certain degree what they ought to be? How about we start leading them and walking them as my leadership that I've called forth? How about we start teaching them how to do the things that you're bringing forth in Revelation? And he's speaking to the whole of his leadership right now. And I looked at him and I said, we have done some of those things before. And he said, yes, we have. And we, we intend to continue to do them in your life, Janet. One of the most highly controversial posts that you ever put out, child, was the one that you actually helped them come to me in the holy places within. It was meditative. It was chewing on the word of God. It was welcoming the Holy Spirit to come in. And that scared people. 
That ought to tell us right now that we have a problem in the body walking in the spirit. Remember what Camille Hedrick said today. She said, I'm going to call them up. And she said that the spirit realm was overlaid around me and I couldn't see it. And it couldn't be seen around me until the transfiguration mount when Moses and Elijah were seen, but they were with me the whole time. He said, that's what I need people to be walking in. Can you see in the spirit realm? Can you walk in the spirit realm? Because if not, Todd, we have a great need to show the people how to do it. He says, I want to know who's revealing that information that I've given to them because they're walking in it with me. That's what I attempted to do with him that day was to show you what I was seeing, to tell you with my spiritual eyes that he's given me through the mind and eyesight of Christ with the prophetic to show you what he's actually offering. And the people who were not afraid and took his hand and went forth to see whatever he was going to reveal to them, they received. The people who were frightened received not because they shut down and they put up the walls. They're terrified. They're terrified about of, of words, words and experiences they may or may have had in the past. He said, I can't work with that. Y'all's going to have to do something about this spirit of fear. He says, what are you going to do when an actual entity manifests itself in your, in your physical eyes because you couldn't see it all along in your spiritual eyes that it was in your atmosphere? How many are teaching to clear their atmospheres? How many are teaching to see their atmospheres right now? Because he says, this child that's speaking to you right now, she walks in all of that and she's doing her best to help people. She's got her hands full because there's not a lot of people that are teaching these things. And if you're not walking in it, you should take heed right now that you should probably start doing that because he's going to open up the spirit realm to us. He's going to catch people up. He's going to open up the spirit realm to us. And if you don't know how to walk in the spirit realm, you will be overwhelmed. If you don't know what these entities are like now in your spirit eyes, in your spirit senses, you better learn because you're going to be overloaded when everything comes about. So how many, he just said, he's over me. So how many of you are teaching my children to be prepared for that? And how many of you are looking at someone like the child that's speaking to you right now and you're freaked out about her trying to help you walk in the spirit and meditate on me? That means focus on me. Everything else gets shut away. You're going to focus on the word of God. You're going to focus on my spirit and you're going to allow me in and you're going to walk in that because if you're terrified to do that, I, 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 I tell you now you are not prepared for what is about to come. Reveal the truths. Get the downloads from me. Give it to the people as you break it down into bitefuls and then help them heed it, which means hear and walk it out. Who is teaching them to walk in the spirit? And if we've got revelators out there who are revealing things from heaven, but they're not actually walking in it, that's a problem. That's called a hypocrite and a Pharisee. So let's talk about the Pharisees of Pharisees. What are you teaching? Because we're called to teach. Every leadership role is called to teach. You teach by example. You're a pastor. You teach by example. You feed them the bitefuls. You break it down. You, you comfort them. You're there for them. You guide them. You lead them. Evangelist. You absolutely love God. You're after God. You got the heart after God, liking like God. You move like God in your heart realm, and you want to help the people to get from point A to point B. Pro -pro Prophet, you hear the heart and the mind of God, and you reiterate that to the people, and then you help them walk it out. It's not just uh, repent, repent for the kingdom of God. Is nigh upon us, then you tell them what, what to do. That's what my prophets of old did. Apostle, you ought to be walking in all of it. You ought to be walking and teaching better than anybody else. And teachers, if you're not walking it out as led by me in private, you ought not be walking it out in public. He'll say that again. Anybody, anybody in any of these roles is teaching by your example. And if you haven't nailed this down with God in private, what are you doing teaching anything in public? To the degree of whatever it is that you're teaching, you're held accountable for it already. So you best make sure that you were taught by the Holy Ghost and led by the Holy Ghost to now teach the others. This isn't teach on the fly. He is very serious. Teaching is one of the highest, one of the highest offices that he calls pretty much everybody to walk out because it's a witness. Because you're turning around and going, what he did with me was this, and how it was successful is this, and what you can gain from it with him in your relationship and productivity in the earth is this. That's teaching. 
I have witnessed more dead atmospheres from chosen people than I care to recently. And I'm so glad he actually pulled me out of a lot of stuff because I actually see that the Holy Ghost has been welcomed into some of these situations when I come there with him to witness to me what is not working and what is dead and what is led of man. And that devastates me. And then usually he's trying to use me to turn it around and make it beneficial. But he's pulling me out of all that stuff right now. He said, I called you to be a bridge. I called you to be a communicator. My son is a communicator. He is a bridge. Everybody comes through him to get back to me. But I'm pulling you from these things because I have some things that I want to tell you alone. That's no one else's topic. And, and he said, notice that when you got pulled out of everyone else's topic, I had something different to say to you. And it's a lot of admonishing and it's a lot of deep stuff. And it's a lot of how to walk this out in the spirit. It's a lot of what I ex actually expect from my leadership unto the body of Christ who is blind and deaf spiritually. They're walking around blind and they can't hear spiritually. They're not hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, and they cannot see in the spirit realm because they're either ignorant to how to walk in it because my people aren't teaching it, or my people know how to do it, but they're keeping it for themselves. They are not freely given something and freely giving it out. They were freely given something by me, and they are not giving it out to the rest of the body of Christ. Oh, do you have to pay a special fee to be a part of this program? Because you can't get this information unless you're a Patreon member or unless you're part of this teaching program that I've got. You've got to actually put a fee into this. Do you got, he says, I'm going to address that right now. I never did that. I never did that. If you, if we cannot trust him to pay our bills while we freely give out, walking life out as, as Yeshua, we're a walking something else out. He didn't charge anybody for what he had to give of information that could save their souls in one manner or another. He never, you never had to pay for a relationship with Christ. You never had to pay to learn the things that were freely given of God. What are we doing? He told me that when I get you out there and you have a name that many people are coming to because they have heard of your relationship, the two of us, and they know that you want to help them, you want to deliver them with me. I called you to deliver. You're going to deliver my message. You're going to deliver my people. We're going to have a sliding scale of whatever those folks can afford. If they can afford a penny, that's what they're going to pay. If the brother next to them can afford 20 cents to get them in, that's what they're going to pay that day. If they can afford 2000 and I'm calling them to pay 2000 to pay for some other people, that's the way it's going to go because that's the way my kingdom works. Yes, we have to pay bills. Yes, we have to pay for the electricity and all, all, all of the utilities to rent a place, etc. and so on, he said. But that'll be taken care of by the kingdom. By far and large, he's going to actually want us to be paying for the full of those people to be able to come in some way, shape, or form. Those that he calls to take care of it. I'm seeing man's kingdoms built down here. I am seeing man within the church build their own kingdoms. Let me speak on what I want to speak on. It's not helping the body. There's a disconnect. He says, I'm watching people preach instead of teach. And there's a disconnect. The people are listening to the words come out their mouth. And they have no idea how to apply that in their lives. He said, how is that helping my kingdom? What that's really saying, he just said right now, is that I'm giving you stuff that you are not actually working out properly. I expect that I'm going to give you a big old chunk of meat. And you as leaders are to break it down into smaller sections for my people to be able to chew and to walk out to apply. If they can't apply it, then you're doing nothing more than being a sounding piece, a one-trick pony. You are doing your own little show. And what you'll get is like-minded people who are like, that's what he told me the other day. Amen, brother. This is the truth. And they're already walking in it. So how are you helping them? Oh, he is very serious over me today. And you'll see that there's more first person that he's about to speak than it is even going to be me. He has need for, what did he say to Peter? Hey, first he said, hey, Pete, do you love me? First of all, what does that mean in God terms? Obedience. He's got a whole bunch of call, called and chosen people who are out of obedience with him, who believe they're in obedience with him because they're doing religious works. 
Religious works, are, this is religious works. Anything that seems to be the topic of God, what God might want to talk about, what God might have to say, what God has revealed, what God did, did he pray, etc. and so on. But it's all done outside of the lead of the Holy Spirit. And he said, oh, he said, you think I'm not going to talk to you guys? I'm going to drop information in you, even if you're not on my topic, even if you're not doing things I want you to do, because I'm not going to revoke those gifts and I'm not going to not have communion with you. But you box me in because all you want to talk about is your topics. Woo, he is, he is upset. I, I started my day out with him. Actually, I started, I ended my night out very, very sad last night. Started my day out with him saying, I, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm probably just going to paint today. Not going to do much of anything. And then all it took was for someone to share one video and someone else to post another video. And he's got a lot to say. He said, Pete, do you love me? That means Peter, obey my commands. I'm your commanding officer, not Satan, not you, not your soul. That was the fault that Peter had when he said, be this far from you, Lord, you're not going to die on the cross. He became Satan. He said, no, 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 Satan was not speaking just to him. He had already been speaking to him through his carnal flesh and his soul latched onto that. And then he became the title of Satan. Satan is not a person. It's a title. It's anybody. It's any person that fits it. So he became Satan. He said, I don't mince words. When I said, get behind me, Satan, I was talking directly to Peter. You get behind me. You don't get behind what that guy wants you to say. You don't get behind the spirit of this world and what he wants to do. You get behind me. You support me. You support me in the kingdom work. That was Pete right then and there. So he's saying to all of us, you get behind what I want to do or I'm not going to use you no more. You'll watch other people excel and take off with me because they're going to be humble. I got a problem with pride in my church right now. It's a pride that they that 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 they are clueless about because they're clueless that they're not even on my topics anymore. He's got he's got a lot to say, folks, and he's got a lot to do and accomplish in this earth. And if we're going to do our own thing, he's going to walk on to the next guy who's not and he's going to promote that guy. He's going to exalt that guy, whoever that guy is, and you will sit back and you will have to learn where you went wrong in your humility process, in your pride process. You will have to throw that down yourself. He's not going to do that, and you will have to actually get yourself behind him. You ain't leading the show, and he's seeing a lot of people who are stepping into roles and leading the show as to what they want to talk about. And furthermore, even if it is something he wants to talk about, they're not breaking it down for my people and exampling to them as a witness how to walk this out and apply it. You said, I can't have one child trying to do all of that. I got to have my other kids jump on board with me and submit themselves and get behind me. So if you love me, Peter, feed my sheep. He said, I'm seeing people get a, get a, a, a five course meal unprepared. It's all in the raw, dumped to them in revelation by me. And they're not refining it down to make it an acceptable meal for my people to be able to chew on. They, my, so my people can't eat. My people are not eating. My people are walking away from a lot of these videos and posts and things going. I hear what they're saying and I have no idea how to apply that. That's a problem, folks, because then we're not actually feeding his sheep. And roll it back. We're not even actually obeying him because if we actually loved him, if we actually loved him properly, we'd obey his command. What is his command? How is he leading you? If he's not leading you, what are you doing teaching and preaching out there? We have got to be led by his spirit. I didn't get to just get, get up today and speak on whatever I wanted to speak on. He said, here's what I'm lacking in the church, the actual correction. What did I call apostles to, Janet? If I, if I ordained you an apostle since before the foundations and you're called to walk in that, then I'm going to take you by the spirit at times and I'm going to get you out and I'm going to have you admonish my people because they are walking in pride. And guess who I resist? I resist the proud. That means I don't couple with them. I don't work with them. Their ministries are not going to grow by large, large, by far and large because I'm not behind it. And when they do, it'll be because Satan promoted them because they're actually working for the kingdom of hell and they're promoting that in the earth. And you can see it by what is their fruits and, and what are they going after? Think about the kingdoms of this world, money, finances, fame, lights, notoriety, etc. And so on. How's that working for some of my people? What are they preaching on? Is it tickling the ears of the people? And when it's not tickling the ears of the people, 
and they're not breaking it down into small enough bites to walk it out. How many people are teaching my kids right now how to clear, how to, how to even see, let alone clear their spiritual atmosphere? That means fight against it. How many of my people are actually teaching right now for people to be able to see and hear in the spirit? You got to be able to hear the voice of God. We can give you ideas on how he moves and how he speaks to each and every one of us, but then you got to walk that out. So I've done my best that I can, and so have a lot of other people on how do you hear the voice of God? How does he speak to you? Just about in any any way. But I'll tell you this. The number one way is that he's inside of you. So for number one, you need if you have any kind of a good thought, if you have any kind of a revelatory t- thought, if you have anything going on inside of you that was godly and it lined up with scripture, that was the voice of the living God. And you need to start listening to his voice and start engaging with that voice. If Satan, if most of his church can agree that Satan speaks to and leads and convinces his people of stuff, then by God, so is God. The fact that we can understand and reverence the fact that Satan somehow has a connection with us that's close then why do we not understand that's the ways in which the spirit spirits in general speak so the holy spirit will be doing the same start working on your thoughts why does he say over and over again that you've got to subdue those thoughts every wicked thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god against the truth of scripture inside of you has to be dealt with you've got to throw that down he's not going to do that why because you've either got the voice of satan in there or the voice of god so boom you got the voice of god inside your very thoughts and what are you allowing will tell you which one you're lined up with but he said, my people can't see in the spirit because they first got to they first got to understand that I am speaking to them and I'm speaking to them all day long. Just because they're not hearing it does not mean that I'm not speaking. I am very faithful. I am very true. When I say that I speak to every one of the sheep that I called since before the foundations and has been predestined to be my called and chosen people, I'm speaking to them. I don't mince anything. I don't lie. I'm not a man that I should lie. I don't change. If I spoke to one, I speak to them all. So they have got to solidify that. Just because they're not hearing me does not mean that I am not speaking. What it does mean is that they have a problem dialing in their radio receiver. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that, he just said. Sin, number one. Doubt, fear, unbelief, pride. Those are the four big ones that stop people from being able to hear. Are you doubting that he's speaking to you all day long? And I'm talking about like every minute. Like every minute of every day, he's trying to convey something to you. Do you actually believe that? Do you fear this voice of God speaking to you that he's in your business watching you all day long? Because you shouldn't fear that. You should be comforted by the fact that he is searching inside your soul all day long trying to find ways to connect to you. He's not searching just for where your your naughty bits are, your ugly and dirty darknesses that he's got to clean up. He already knows all that. He's trying to find ways to connect to you where you're going get, to get it. Oh, I get it. That's him. He's trying to connect to me. So don't doubt that and don't be afraid of the voice of God, okay? We have too many people in the church who are afraid of God. He's not to be feared in the way that we, if especially if he's wanting to reconnect with everyone, he just said. If I'm wanting to reconnect with, with everyone and save them and pull them to me and clean them up and get them back to the image I made them in because I love them, then don't be afraid of me. Unite with me. Connect with me. Have communion with me. Honor me. Revere me. And that's usually being respectful and having a conversation with him about things, being honest. Don't try to cover it up. He already knows what the truth is. Don't try to, don't try to weasel your way out of it. Admit it. Lay it all down. Fear, doubt, unbelief. Do you even believe that he's speaking to you every single day, all day long, trying to find ways to connect with you? Because it's, pro- it's pride to actually be an unbeliever. That's that's exactly what the fallen one put into us. Why? Because that's what happened to him. He did not believe that God had his best interest at hand and that he cared about him and that he was loved and he was appreciated and he was accepted. And he stared at himself for too long. So if you're staring at yourself, if everything is about a problem you've got going on, it's what you need, what what you don't have, uh, what I want, etc. and so on. You have a problem with pride and he's going to resist you. That's another reason why you can't hear him clearly. You got to do something about yourself being promoted on the throne. Ask me how I know any of this stuff. He slowly walked out all these things with me. Some of it I jumped on right away and was like, well, 
let's how how about you and I both reveal pride wherever it is because I want to do something about it because if I'm going to exalt pride, I'm not exalting you. And I have a problem with that because I don't have a life in this earth that I'm seeking to do something with for my own pleasure or for my own needs. So there's a lot of reasons why people can't hear him. If you can't connect with hearing that he's speaking to you in all these different ways, how will you step into seeing in the spirit realm? Because he said, I do things in an order. How many people are going to get freaked out if I immediately open their spiritual eyes without them being able to hear the spirit of God lock onto me, know me, and be able to trust me in the spirit realm when everything else is being revealed to them around them and they have no idea to the extent of exactly what has been operating around them. He said, this, that he said my realm is layered right over your realm. So as Janet's out here in, 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 the, in the field right now and recording this, there are spirit beings walking all around this field that you can't see. Now, if I turned on the spiritual vision to be able to see every single one of them, and she's right, she's looking at that little, that little cedar tree that's in front through these trees right here. There's, there's a whole bunch of my angelic walking back and forth in this field, absolutely enjoying all of this. You can't see that with your with your earthly eyes. You have to see that with your spiritual eyes. How many are teaching my people how to do this? Because they're ready, because they can hear my voice already, and they're ready to walk in the spirit realm. He said, I don't have very many people teaching the spiritual sight because the people have to be able to actually hear and trust me and be in a proper place before I'll open their spiritual sight in those ways. And this child has spiritual sight, but she's not seeing it with these, these physical eyes. You too will not see it with these physical eyes until I line up, I dial in like a, like a receiver or like, or like a camera, like a video camera or, a, or a, a still camera. I will dial in the lens and you will see both realms overlap. But I'm not going to do that until you guys can walk in it with your spiritual sight alone because I have people in the body right now who actually have their spiritual sight being opened and what I show them in the spirit is frightening them so bad they go into a full-on panic attack. I saw this in high definition. It was, it was a wolf. This is one of my sisters. And, um, and he's using it as a perfect example right now because what he shows you in your imaging room cannot harm you. What he shows you of the spirit realm in your imaging room, in your imagination, in the visual aspect of how your mind, the mind of Christ works, he's not, he's not going to allow something to harm you in that area. But if we're going to go into a full-on panic attack by what he shows us, we're not ready to see the more than, which would be the dialing in of the lens that goes and puts this realm wrapped straight over with the spirit realm, both. We're not ready for that. He said, there's a difference between what I show you in the spirit and a spirit popping in and manifesting in your life in front of you in this realm. Those spirits, if you're not walking with me properly, can harm you. Because you got to have the protection of God. You got to have the heads up. You got to know that. You got to believe me. He said, number one, the reason why a lot of people will be affected is by entities coming in is sin that's being upheld in their lives. I mean, like totally well aware that they're in disobedience to God. And so then they're haughty, thinking that they're all protected and totally safe. And God's going to let some things happen where these things are going to manifest. Okay. Because these people need to understand that he resists the proud. That's why Satan is going to come to a lot of people in those different ways. And he's going to test all of us. So even his that are walking proper with him are going to, at some point, have these entities that are going to test you. But if you're already walking proper with him and you know how to walk in the spirit with him and you're doing these things with him and you're hedged in and you know that, then you have the upper hand and we make a show of those entities. But if you're not walking in that, then you're going to find out that those entities very much can interact with you in the five senses of your realm. But anything that he shows you in the spirit realm, because he's revealing a thing to you, it can't harm you. It's there to show you it's symbolic. He's there with you. And anything that, anything that approaches me in this realm, I'm covered. Because I'm, I'm, I make sure that I've got my armor on all the time. What does that mean? What do I, Because he's got people that are actually sitting around at home imagining putting on a helmet and a breastplate. 
It's just not what he's talking about, folks. He says that it's the, the putting on of the armor is that you're walking in righteousness. You're walking in my salvation. You're walking in the gospel and the truth. You're girded up. You ain't living a lie. You ain't running your own show. You're not led of the soul anymore. You're in right standing with God. That's how you're armored up properly. So if you're not walking in those things and you're upholding pride and sin, guess what those entities are going to be able to do? They're going to be able to do a lot. In the five senses, touch, taste, sound, right? Feel, all that stuff. Sight, all that stuff's going to show up to us because you're upholding the carnal. So they're going to show up in the carnal realm. But see, if we're walking in the spirit with God as one, when they show up in the carnal realm, you're like, yo, you're going down, buddy. <laughs> How ridiculous was it of you and audaciously prideful of you to think that you're going to get an upper hand with the holy living God. The Nazarene himself is in here with me and we're one. So depending on what he's about to dictate to me is what your fate's going to be. That's how I walk, folks. That's not just some pompous audacity of me that I drummed up somehow. It's the Holy Ghost coming over me telling me that that's reality. I've already put a show to them, Janet. You walk straight with me and I got this. I'll lead you because you're listening. So again, we're coming all the way back to who's listening to God. Leadership out there. Are you listening to the spirit of God? And if he's given you downloads and revelation, are you breaking it down with him the way that he's asking you to so that you can feed his sheep properly? Because they don't know what to do with a big fat raw meal that's frozen dumped onto their table. It's way too much for them to be able to do anything with what God gave you as revelation because maybe you're able to break it down in your private home and cook that meal up and serve it and then take your knife and your, and your fork utensils out and cut it into small enough pieces where you can eat a little bit at a time and even get it. That's what he has need for us to be doing. Who are we actually serving? Are we serving anybody but ourselves? He has need for us to be breaking these things down. I can help people walk in the, the walk in the spirit with their with their spiritual sight. I can. But I'll tell you this, I, I can't give them their spiritual sight. Christ gives the spiritual sight. But as he starts giving people these visions and these spiritual sights, then I can help them start to move in the spirit where it's not just a visual that's given to you by the Lord in a revelation. But now he wants you to actually access the moving living chess pieces of the spirit world that's operating around you in your homes, at work, in your car, at the grocery store. And you can see with your spiritual eyes, the beings that are walking around and who needs help and who doesn't and all that. This is stuff that he walks out with me. I don't talk about it much because he says we have a problem with competition in the church where people start to beat themselves up because they can't do this, that, and the other. And then they start doing the work of Satan in their own lives. So, so now they're not even helping themselves at all because now all they're doing is looking at everybody else who can do all these things with God. He said, Janet, when did I ever say in scripture I'll only do certain things with certain people? He said, I am equal to everybody, but you got to walk the same walk. If you want to walk of Elijah or Jesus Christ on the Mount of Figuration, then you walk the path they walked. You go through what they went through. I am equal opportunist for everybody. The opportunities are abroad for everybody. So what are you going to walk out? If you're going to stay in a place where you're just going to pout all day long about what you can't do, you're never actually going to step into, let's try and work this out with God. Let's work out my salvation. He gave me all these wonderful gifts. The, all the gifts that are ever gifted are in Christ, and I'm in Christ. I can walk these things out. Furthermore, he's in me. I should be able to walk these things out. So practice them. Exercise them. But if you're going to stay in a mode of comparison to to somebody else, you're not even ready because you haven't even thrown down pride yet. So once you can keep continuing to throw down pride and say, that's it. If he, if he can do this with Janet or anybody else, if he did it with Christ, if he did it with Elijah, if he did it with, with John and he gave him revelations and he saw and he walked in the spirit, then by God, he'll do that with me too. If I'll walk the same path and I'll exercise the same things that these folks did. They were right with God, number one. They believed him, number two. They were not scared. Number three, they didn't let doubt when it came in rule over them. Number four, they were humble. So those that are ready to learn how to start accessing the spirit realm and seeing what's going on in the environment around them, he's ready to do that stuff. So his question to the leadership is, are you walking in these things already? Because if you're not, then you need to get on that with the Holy Ghost because he's, a, he's, he's about ready to promote the people who are 
because they're going to be turning around and helping everybody else to walk it out. He said, is it, he said I'm going to tell you right now, is that easy? No. You want to know why most people don't want to do that, Janet? Because it's called parenting in this world. And most, most parents in this world want to put a device before somebody and have a video preached to them. He said, what do, what do parents do with kids in this, in this world, in this culture right now? He said, that's what I see happening in my, my body of leadership. They want to put a video before someone and go, that's, what, that's enough. That's what I did. And he goes, that's not what that's not, I never did that. He said, I might have preached a message standing in a field or, or in, the, in the byways and the highways and, and, and in the markets, but he said, I walked it out. I had disciples, I had people, I had students under me. Those are children under me, and I taught those children as a parent. I very much mothered them. I led them to the Father, and I mothered them. I showed them how to have a conversation and a relationship with the Father, and I mothered them in it. I parented them in it. We have a whole bunch of leaders who are not wanting to parent anybody. They're wanting to pump out videos and they're wanting to dump revelation out in these chunks that cannot be digested by anybody. And it's not actually helping people to heed anything and to be able to put it into play. And then you got a problem with Christ himself when you're doing that because you haven't done your work. You haven't sat in it long enough to break it down into digestible pieces for the people to be able to apply in their lives. They have to be able to understand it, Janet, and then they have to be able to put it into play. So are you actually walking it out? And this is for all of us, including myself. Are we walking it out? And if we are walking it out, if we're not walking it out, he just said, first of all, you need to get on that. You need to sit down with Christ long enough to break down how you're walking out what you're teaching, because if you're not walking it out, you're a hypocrite. So first of all, we got to be walking it out before we're teaching it. And then as, as we're ready to teach it, then are we breaking it down in consumable enough bites for the rest of the body of Christ? Because otherwise, all you're doing is preaching to yourself and anybody that's at your level or beyond your level, and you'll get affirmations. That's it. He said, I actually have a need in my body. My body, my ministry, I have a need for my people to be fed because they're starving and they're not starving from a lack of a whole bunch of people doing posts and videos. They're starving because there's nothing they can apply out of them because they don't even have the understanding. So I, I realized that this, like I said, he's speaking what he has need of to speak into the church right now. And right now he's admonishing any one of us that's in a leadership role that is not actually helping the people to understand these things. And I'll tell you right now, if people are wanting to reach out to me to want to know how to see in the spirit, I cannot work with you to see in the spirit unless you can tell me that you hear from the spirit of the living God in your day to day lives. Because you're going to have to hear him and you're going to have to not doubt that you're hearing him and not be scared that you're hearing him. You're going to have to not be scared of the spirit realm. You're going to have to absolutely have trust in God and know your relationship with him and be confident with him and all of that. So I'm going to move most people back to please walk out the hearing God. He's going to speak to you in any number of ways. This whole place is his. It's a simulated realm that simulated why he says well let's explain that janet it's simulated because our true our true person the true reality is where we came from which is the spirit world which is far above this folks if you plug into the spirit world we're all plugged into this realm because we have a body if you plug into the spirit realm it's it's like going from the and i'm forgive me electrical uh current people <laughs> but it's like going from the the 120 or whatever uh you know electrical uh, wattage and 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 amps to 220 or whatever it is you're jumping up in that realm to be able to understand concepts and 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 um senses like our five senses. oh man there are so many senses more than than i mean it's like color has taste and sound over there it's just it's just, so many things are layered so much more that's our real realm this is a simulated realm because number one we, we were put into a physical body and he made us a place that's similar to the way that he has a layout of heaven, but it's very material and heavy and dense so that we could tactilely experience what this is like. It was supposed to be beautiful and totally not grayscale like it is. I mean, you look out here right now and you see greens and browns and some blue, grayish blues, and that's about it. His realm is like high definition uh, video games compared to this. I mean, it's just psychedelic colors. So it's completely different. This place is a broken simulation at that. It was not like this when Adam and Eve were first walking in the physical realm. And yet it went all dark and it went all void. The, the first books of the Bible talk about this. Okay. So 
God it has us in this broken down realm. It's hit up. It's broke. It's jacked up. So it's not what it's supposed to be like. It's got evil running around in it because we wanted to step into something that had both good and evil. Do we understand that? We wanted to step into something that we would be able to have to choose between good and evil. So guess what's running around us all the time? Good and evil. That's why you can see the idea that God had for this place, but you're like, this is not it. This is not what heaven looks like. It is this grayscale compared to, yep. In every way, shape, and form, he says, this is a broken simulation. If this is a broken simulation, then you need to understand that what you're seeing here does not operate fully like it should be. So you have to understand that you're going to have to throw down the fact that everybody wants to believe this is real reality. It's not. This is a simulated broken realm. Your real reality is where you came from. First, you gotta, you got to solidify that into your lives that this ain't it. And everything in here should scream at you, this ain't it. You ever sat around with God and go, I oh, mean, I don't feel like I fit in. And I just don't feel like this world is like what it's supposed to be cracked up to be. I don't like this place at all. Exactly. It's broken. It's jacked up. It's hit up. It's bunk. It's fallen apart. It's crooked. It's got evil and it's got good. And you were supposed to choose the good. You were supposed to choose holiness and righteousness and then leave the rest behind. It's going to be a continuous walk while you're here, he said, because you got evil all around you. He said, but I already put a show to all that. I already put a stop to all that in my own life and I'm in you. So let's put a stop to that. Let's start walking in the spirit realm. So then you got to go, nobody's really teaching me how to do that, God. And he goes, hello, that's what I'm here for. I'm the Holy Spirit. I bring you into all truth. And the truth is this realm is just a simulation. You need to start walking in the real realm. So how many of his kids are, how many of his children leadership out there are teaching people how to do that, how to walk in the spirit realm? And if you're not doing that, he's going to say it again. If you as a leader are not doing that, then you know what your homework is with God right now. And I didn't have anybody but him to teach me, folks. I just had to believe that anything this realm showed me that was possible, I'm talking movies, music, plays, books, any of that, scripture, all of that, what, what they walked out. I just start believing that all that stuff's actual. And he's like, yep. So why aren't you walking in it? And I'd be like, well, I'm not sure how. And he goes, well, let's practice. Let's start somewhere. Get your butt on the bike. If you're not even going to get on the bike, how can I teach you how to ride it? So he started walking with me. He starts, you know, saying, close your eyes. I want you to tell me what's in the room. I want you to shut down this world. Tell me what's in the room. So for me, that's how he started walking with me in the spirit realm. Because he's like, this room is full of beings in here right now. He said, but he's going to have, he, he's going to have them pop in and out. Meaning like now I got to tell him how many are in the room, how many of his angels, et cetera, and so on. Okay. But he didn't do any of that. Note, note that he had to have a conversation with me to do that. He had to have this conversation where he's like, this is what I'm going to do. This is how we're going to practice it. I had to hear him first. So I'm going to roll it all the way back. If you as leadership are not teaching people how to hear the spirit of God, we need to roll this back to everybody does. Start practicing it with God. Do you have a, because he said, roll it back further again. Do they have a problem with the four top ones, Janet? Pride. Are you walking in pride? Are you scared? Are you walking in unbelief and doubt? Because if those things are going on, you're not going to hear the voice of God very well. Because, because he just said, why? Because you're entertaining the devil. Fear, he didn't give you a spirit of fear. So number one, if you're scared, you're entertaining his enemy. You're coupled up with somebody else. You're going to have to do something about that. You're going to have to actually solidify within yourself that you're safe and you're good and God's got you, especially if you're wanting to connect with him and move with him. Who's more powerful, God's spirit or the or the enemy? Greater is he that is in you, right? Than he that is in the world, the spirit of the world. So you have to start believing those things. And then you have to say, my dad wants me to walk in the spirit. My dad wants me to see him in the spirit. My dad wants me to hear him in the spirit. And I'm going to do these things. And if he wants that, then I'm covered. I'm good. And he's got angelic all around me to help me with this. How many of his kids are helping people with that? He just said right now, how many of you guys are having seminars and things like that to learn how to walk in the spirit where you're walking it out step by step? And he said, furthermore, that's what we were doing in that meditation video that frightened half of my people. In some way, shape or form, they were fr they were they had the big four pride, fear, doubt, unbelief, all operating in that situation. And he said, if you're going to have those operating, you are by far and large not going to get what I have for you. And I resist the proud, so you're not going to receive very much of anything at all. 
We have to actually believe the, the truth of the scripture. That's what it means to walk in the spirit. It means you're walking in the truth. My father said that he's high above all principalities and powers. So why would I fear anything that I see either? So then he started working with me on seeing in the spirit realm, not from these physical eyes, but seeing from my spiritual eyes. I wasn't afraid anymore, folks. What, what, what do I have to fear, right? Why are you going to fear any of that? Fear the one who can actually kill your body and your soul, putting it into hell. Which really means this. Why would I fear that guy then? Because he's for me, not against me. So I'm not going to fear him in the way that other people fear him. The only time I'm going to fear him in that way, being scared of him, is if I'm going to blatantly walk in rebellion and disobedience to him because I'm that pompous to do so. Then I'm going to sit back and say, Janet, you realize he's going to give you a uh, sow and reap right now. He doesn't want to, but he's, and that would frighten me. Hello, B. Are you coming to say hello to the people? <laughs> Which reminds me, nothing is by accident. We're in December, folks. It's like a high of 40, and you just saw a bumblebee. I hope it was on the screen. I hope it captured all of that because to see that bee in this weather is unheard of at this time of year in Michigan. But what he wanted me to bring up is that I gave her a visual a long time ago. The company of Debra's are going to step out. And let me remind you that in Christ, there's now neither a male or female. So this company of Debra's is a symbolic stereotype of a person. It's, it's the kind of person. She was both um, a judge. She judged rightly with God. She was discerning rightly with God. And she walked in the prophetic. What does that mean? She heard the mind. She heard the, the heart and the intent and the agenda of God. And she was fearless. That's the company he's raising up right now. So this bumblebee flying around me right now in the dead of, uh, of what should be winter <laughs> in Michigan. Usually, you know, by this time of year, we're not sitting here with green grass and leaves where we're, we got snow. But he needed that bumblebee to remind me there's a certain company of people that he's going to raise up, folks. Even the men of her time said, I'm not going to do that unless you come. Why would they say that to her? Because she walked with the Holy Living God and they knew it. And they knew that if she went and she was told to go by the Holy Living God, they, would gonna, they were going to prevail. This is a company, a big company of women, he just said. It will be women to begin with. But many men will walk in this too. But he said, the problem is, is we've got a lot of men who are still very much in pride doing their own thing. And folks, this is not me saying it. This is what the Lord's been showing me because he's had me breaking behind the scenes, praying and begging him to do whatever it's going to take to get the men on board. I mean, the majority of them, because there are men on board, but I mean, the majority of those that should be walking differently with him. You know, like out in all the different denominations and things like walking pharisaical. Because because I saw something that Jamie Walden posted today and it was like this astronomical percentage of if the man, if the husband, if the man gets himself on board, usually the family falls in line really quickly to getting on board with God too. Women, much lower. It was much lower on that spectrum. So we need the men of God to get right with God and to be humble before God and actually be moved by his Holy Spirit and to believe in these things, to believe in hearing and walking and seeing in the, in the spirit realm. Because folks, we're going back to that. I want you to sit for a second and understand we're going back to that. At some point, you're going to step back into that once you step on the other side. Even if you're going to be, to be thrown into hell, you're going to step right back into the spirit realm. And it's much more real than this. If you think you've experienced pain in this life, you wait. You wait to see what you would experience in hell on the other side or the lake of fire. But likewise, heaven is going to be so much more, so much more than we can even fathom that we would experience in sensations and, and the translation of those sensations into our understanding and experiences over there. Incredible. But folks, we're going to have to start actually walking and talking what we believe. And if you're believing God and scripture, then you need to start walking in it. If you're not. 
I'm talking to everybody. Definitely, though, talking to the leadership, because if the leadership isn't walking in what Yeshua walked in, how are you going to do the greater? And how will you even teach the rest of the body what the greater is? Yeshua saw in the spirit realm. He, he's got, he, I still haven't even walked in what he's walked in yet. I haven't translated myself straight through a crowd of people with the Holy Ghost helping me to do all that. I haven't done that yet. I haven't raised the dead yet. Those are the average works of Christ that books couldn't even contain that he did so many. So those are the works he already did. If he already did them and I'm not walking in them, then I need to be practicing these things. I, I, have, I have stepped out and tried to raise the dead with God. Thus far, it did not take. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have more to learn. <laughs> I don't blame him for that, though. Mostly, I blame whether or not it was his will and whether I was walking it out properly. Like what issues was I having going on if it wasn't, like, was I not hearing him? You know, uh, but I'm walking in trying to do all these things with him because those are the average works. And I'm called to do, he said, we're called to do the works that God did. And then we're going to be called to greater. How are we going to walk in all of that, folks? If people are fundamentally still not sure if they're even hearing the, the voice of God. And how are we going to see in the spirit realm if we don't actually hear in the spirit realm first? Because the hearing part is integral for me, at least, because that's how I was able to trust him to walk with the sight. And so now that I'm walking with him in the spiritual realm sight, seeing what entities are around me and what's going on and what the atmosphere looks and feels like, I'm using my spiritual senses, at least practicing them in an infancy stage, then I'm at least more prepared for when he starts to dial in my lens, like he said, and I start to see them walking around in this realm. Because that's my next phase. Everything is in phases. Everything is ordered steps by the Lord. He has order to them is his point. If we haven't passed class 101, you don't go to class 102. That's the way he works. Because why? Because you're not ready. You don't have the spiritual foundation under you to be able to support you in more. So he, he has need for us to understand what are we actually teaching? What are we actually teaching? Because revelation is just revelation. How much, how much revelation Jesus gave was incredible. I mean, the revelations of how heaven works and this earth was incredible, but he never just said it. He turned around and told the disciples now to do it, which then let them be fumbling around with the Holy Spirit in him as well as they walked it out. So if we're just going to be parrots, I I'm called to be a prophet. I'm called to be an apostle. I'm called to be a prophetic apostolic priest, to be honest with you. That's what he calls me. I'm not called to just parrot to, to the world and the, and the population of his body what he showed me and, and what he said to me. I have to help them apply it. Go and make disciples. How many of us are so interested in everything else that we could talk about from Scripture outside of the fact that we have a commission here? Everything that I bring forth it has a bearing on why am I even telling you any of this? Because we have a commission, sir. It's called a great harvest. And my butt is supposed to be busy with you helping to pull this harvest in with you. And he said, do people realize that that is when you're feeding them and bringing the revelation and the understanding to them that this is feeding my sheep. This is pulling them in from where they were starving, where no one was feeding them. This is, if you love me, feed my sheep. We are on a great commission. It's not just to bring the good news to them with a handshake. Hello, this is Christ. You need to repent, etc. and so on. Then tell them how to walk out repentance. Then show them how to walk out the sanctification, consecration process. Show them how to walk out discipleship. Show them. You be a witness. Witness to the world, Christ. That's what it means. It doesn't mean go door to door knocking with a pamphlet. This is what he has a problem with right now. This is what's going on in the body of Christ right now that needs to be rectified. What are we, who, who's actually leading the show? He keeps saying that to me. Inside your vessel, who is leading the show? Because I got a lot of one trick ponies out here who are leading their own shows. It's the put your name in the blank show.
I cannot be any more clear than what he is giving folks. And he's upset. And when he's upset, it's more than just anger. It's the fact that his sheep are not getting fed. They're not getting, they're not getting groomed, cleaned up by us. We're not helping to wash them up. We're not helping to feed them what they need of their sustenance. We're not hel- we're not helping to train them up in the way to go with the Lord. We're not parenting them. That's what's breaking his heart. That's whenever he gets upset, it's because something is being done that was unnecessary and it's detrimental. Every single time. If he's going to get upset at the wicked, why is he upset at the wicked? Probably because they're not righteous, they're not holy, and they chose the wrong way, and they're leading other people detrimentally into harm, uh, yada, yada, yada. So, like, anytime he's ever going to be upset is because there are things that did not need to be taking place that are, they were unnecessary, and now it's causing detriment not only to them, to his kingdom, to his plans and agendas, to love, to salvation, but it's wrecking other people. I pray to God we get more people who are led by the Holy Spirit. I pray to God we get more people who can differentiate between their soul and their flesh and their spirit. These are, these are, he just said, these are rudimentary things, folks. The Holy Spirit all along was attempting to bring us into truth. But if we're going to be minded on what we want to be minded on, we're going to watch videos and posts and what everybody else is saying all day long. Guess what? You don't have room for him. You don't have room for him to speak to you and show you these things about yourself. You're not asking him, wait, how does my spirit work? How does my soul work? How does my body work? This is the stuff that I sit around and do. And people probably, worldly people who cannot understand any of this are sitting around going, she's wasting her life. What is this? She's so lazy. She's so, and mind you, I am super busy with him behind the scenes and then and then to those who do have spiritual sight and spiritual understanding and spiritual ears that hears what the spirit of the lord is saying they jump on board and they they find it valuable when i sit back and tell him what i've learned about the difference between spirit soul and body my own and how to differentiate why because the spirit of the living god can divide asunder between spirit and soul it's very important that we understand the difference between our spirit and our soul And that our soul gets on board with our spirit and is led of our spirit so that it's not led of the body's flesh, carnal mind. How many of us are helping people walk that out and understand the difference? How many how many of his leadership are counseling with people behind the scenes in the practical? Not just preaching to them, not just reciting scripture, not showing them how to put it into play. But how many are actually walking it out on what? Okay, what does that scripture mean? Now, how do you live that scripture? Do we even have leadership that's living the scripture? So much he wants to talk about right now. And it just felt like he was petting the side of my face. I'm like rubbing the side of my face. This is, this is, he's got, he's, he's rebuking a lot lately. And I have to thank him for that because where I need rebuke, he's faithful to do it. Because what that means is I correct those I love. He said that. I only correct, I only correct those I love. So first of all, if you're not being corrected by him, I would think about that. Think about that. You're not being convicted of anything. Why would you not be being convicted of anything on a daily basis? Because otherwise, if we're not being convicted of something, we're not being corrected. If we're not being corrected, he's not parenting us. That Why would he not be parenting us? That's a problem. Who Likely, he just said, because you're leading your own show and I resist the proud. I'm not going to try to parent the proud. I am not the parent of the prideful. I'm the parent of the humble. So you humble yourself before me. You seek me on these matters. I'm I'm very I'm very I Janet am very discouraged by what I'm seeing but I'm also encouraged when I do see like Camille Hendrick Hendricks today that I did see her preaching recently and I don't know when the video was cuz I don't remember the date on it but brother Bill sent it to me and I I appreciate when the Holy Spirit actually has a hold of someone not just to drop some revelation in, but they actually have a hold of that person. Um, and that person is humble and is being led by his spirit 
to bring forth the actual walking out of parenting the body. Because if he called you to a leadership role in any way, shape, or form, you are called to parent the body of Christ in whatever office or lane he called you in. But before you can even do that, you got to be right with him in your lane. You got to stay in your lane. You got to get behind him. So you can't be Satan. You can't be run by your own soul and what you want to do. It can't be the one trick so-and-so show. It has literally got to be you behind him as he leads you in your ways. It's those that are led of the Spirit of God that are his children. And when he leads us, when it's really him doing that, we're going to be feeding sheep. We're not going to be just preaching at them. We're not going to be just housing them in fences and barns. Pastors have more jobs than that. We're not just going to be talking about how amazing God is as an evangelist. We're going to be witnessing Christ, which means you're going to be walking these things out to the world, explaining these things and moving in the ways of God. If we're not doing that, then I don't care what you're out there preaching. You need to roll, slow your roll and roll it back, he just said, and you need to be doing the first works. You need to return to the first works yourself. Number one, it's prostrate yourself before the holy living God and be extremely mindful that what you are doing in the name of the Lord in ministry is very, very highly accountable. I don't do anything that I'm not sure he's not leading me in, including bringing a, a reprimand and an admonishing to the leadership body of Christ. Because I'm part of that and I have to sit before every word of everything that he's saying and I got to check myself in every area of this. But the one thing I know is that he has need of a people who have not forgotten the Great Commission. Which is to go and make disciples of them and preach the good news to the nations of people and walk it out as a witness. Go and witness Christ. The two of you are one and you're led of the Holy Spirit. Go witness that to the world that you're not running your own one trick pony show. You are being run by the Holy Spirit of God. You are prostrate before the king and you are behind him. You're be, be get behind me. You're behind him and his agenda in the earth. And when you wake up every day, it's not what you have on your mind. It's what is the holy living God leading you in? Because today I woke up thinking that I was going to paint because it's been a rough 24 hours in the spirit realm with me, in my soul realm as well. And he's like, I have need to show you some things and this is what I want you to bring forth. And I have a release across my chest right now. So I know that he has said quite a bit in this. I don't even know how long it is, but I've been out here a while. So if you, if you want to see in the spirit realm, then you got to hear in the spirit realm first. If you want to hear the holy living God clearly, then you got to practice hearing the holy God. I sat around with him and, and did, I, I was on bedridden. What else did I have to do? Watch TV, scroll things on social media. That would have been pretty selfish. I crossed over in between realms, half in this realm and half out. And I saw the spirit realm overlay this realm. It was pretty cool. And then I realized I don't know him the way I should. That was the clarity of stepping over. Yo, you don't you you didn't even fulfill like half your book, dude. You don't know him the way you should have. And you didn't do your job. That's all stuff I knew instinctively. So guess what I'm doing now? I'm doing I'm doing that regardless of what it looks like and what it sounds like and I'm watching people's lives change because he's actually able to get out what he wants to get out through me, not what I have. I don't have anything, folks. I can do nothing of myself. I got nothing for you. Janet has nothing for you. Janet and Jesus as one has a lot that I can bring forth because he has a lot that he wants to bring forth. But in a lot of these messages like this, you want to see, you want to hear in the spirit realm. First, you got to be a believer. You got to kill the big four. Fear, doubt, unbelief, and pride. All that has to be dealt with by you in your vessel, and you have to become a believer. As you become a believer and you uphold the truth within, then you start walking in it going, no, no, no. This is all stuff he gave us. I should be able to do this. Then you start practicing it. That's exercising your salvation. Start exercising all the gifts he gave you. He has them all. If you don't even know the gifts you have, then start practicing all kinds of different things with him and see which ones he's got inside of you that are already operating that you're unaware of. Get familiar with it. Get on the bike. 
put your feet to the pedals and begin. Don't be scared you're going to fall. Don't be scared of the spirit realm. Because if you're scared of the spirit realm, you're not going to be able to hear or see very clearly or exercise any of it because you're too tied to this realm. You're too anchored and grounded to the material. Your dad comes from the spirit realm. Your dad operates fully in the spirit realm. And remember, he is the high ruling one in the spirit realm. What are you afraid of? And this place is just his footstool. So what are you afraid of here? Start moving with him in the spirit realm. Start asking him to help you in these different ways. Start asking him to show you all different ways that he speaks to you in the in in your average every day. Start, start, start. And if you're out there and you're called to teach and bring forth things and mentor, make sure you're in alignment with the Holy Living God. Make sure you're moving from the leader, the lead of his spirit. Make sure that the topic that you're on is the topic that he wants to talk about. And if it is, then make sure that you're taking this big chunk of revelation he's giving you and you're breaking it down into small enough pieces that the people can digest it and eat it and gain sustenance because that's when you actually feed the sheep. And remember that we're called to a great commission that is more than just a handshake about you need to repent and return to God. You don't just walk away at that point. We are called to go make disciples of the nations, nations as multiple different kinds of people. He led and he parented people. He didn't just go stand on the corners and preach. He did not just pop out a video and say a few things and step back and go, that's good. He actually helped the people walk this stuff out. That's what he has need of in the earth. But it's going to take a humble people, a fearless people, a people who are actually believing in all of this. And when the doubt comes in, they're throwing it down because they know that that's just the devil trying to weigh they, lay them. We need a people that is killing the big four. Fear, doubt, unbelief, and pride. You got to do that. You got it. Those are the bare minimum that you have to be walking in with him on a daily basis. And then you got to practice this stuff. And then you got to believe that what you're getting is good and from him. And he told me a long time ago, if you guys get a good idea of any kind, if you get good understanding of any kind, you should understand that you did not come up with that. The Holy Spirit gave that to you. The living God gave that to you and you heard from him and we are working as one in that area of what you just got. This is what we have need of. We have need of a humble leadership. And I've been preaching it for two, three years now. He's tearing down the leadership. Get ready. A lot of people are dying. We've seen that. He said they're going to be dying in pulpits. They're going to be dying out of ministries. I'm going to be removing them. Bare minimum, if I... If I don't take them home entirely, if they don't cross over entirely, I'm going to be pulling them down out of their positions. They're going to be uh, resigning left and right. He says, I'll get my will done one way or another, because if you, if people are going to run their own show, they, they're not working for me. And I'm going to throw this stuff down and I'm going to exalt those in due season that have been pulling the weight behind the scenes. Because there are certain people in his realm that are pulling more weight than other people. It's not even the weight that they're, they were called to, to do on their own. But they're pulling extra people's weight because other people are slacking off. And they're slacking off in their relationship with God is what he just said. They're slacking off in what they're supposed to be doing in private with me walking these things out. Which means we have we have too much of our own shows going on down here. We have people building their own kingdoms down here. And he's he's in the he's he said, I'm not even gonna have to come and wreck their kingdom. I'm just gonna I'm just going to expose and then I'm gonna exalt the others. It's going to expose the truth. That's the only thing he does. The light comes in to show the truth and to and to expose the darkness. And guess what? The darkness flees from him. So wherever these people are walking in filth and darkness, it's going to be exposed and they're going to be thrown down. And God's rightful people that are doing this with him, working their spiritual butts off behind the scenes, are going to be exalted into a proper position by him. Because he, because why? Because they're so humble that he can use them, meaning they're out of the way. They're an empty vessel. I don't want to have to bring forth these messages, but there's something that comes over me inside of me through the Holy Spirit where he's like, I have need of this. And we're going to speak about what needs to be taken place. And then once he does, that burden is off of me because it wasn't my burden. It was his burden, but I needed to get it off me because it was too heavy for me. But now that it's been released and now that it's been heard, the leadership, the people that he's called to actually help him parent the other people, you have a job to do. 
And you can only walk in what you've been walking in. You can only help them with what you've been helped in. So I would encourage this time period that we have right now before he catches us up to recommission us, get straight with him and start walking in what you're supposed to be called to walk in, whatever that is. Start practicing it with him in the private because he's going to eventually exalt the people in private that have been doing it into the public. But if you haven't been doing it in private, you're not going to all of a sudden step into something in the public that you have no, it, there's no fake it till you make it in the kingdom with him. That's this world's, that's this world's rhetoric. Start walking it out and then turn around and light the torches of the rest of his brethren. Because if we're not going to do that, then we're sucking up all the goods for ourselves. That's it. We're good with that. We'll pop out a video here or there. If they don't understand it and they don't know how to put it into play, oh, well, that's the Holy Spirit's job, right? That's not what Christ walked out. That is not what our big brother and our bridegroom and our Savior walked out. That is not what the Son of Man walked out. And you're a Son of Man who is supposed to be following after his ways. We have a much need of humility in the church right now in the body. And he said, I'm in the fashion right now of humbling my people. So, Father, I pray that this message has been acceptable to you. I thank you for coming over me and speaking what you have to bring forth. I pray that it penetrates the minds and the hearts of those that hear this. I pray that those that need to get right with you in whatever area and humble themselves and start walking in the spirit more than what they are, practicing these things with you in private so that they can bring them out into the public and they can help the others with it. I pray that we will be. Because I'm reminded right now that we have dream interpretations that should be coming through. And these are things that you've been working out with me and walking out with me in private. And so I'm able to bring these things of what the Holy Spirit has to say about the symbolism of what he gives in the dream realm. To give to us to help us in the material realm. To help us with the understanding of the spirit realm. So Father, I pray that we will all start stepping into these giftings. You have multiple giftings. You gave them out severally to everyone. So nobody can say that they don't have them. Our job is to start walking in what would those be sir can we walk in these things can we practice these things what have you called me to and they start to have a conversation with you about it sir and if they can't hear you sir how are they ever going to learn that you have things for them because you're speaking to them so father i pray that people will start getting on board with the fact that you speak directly to the man inside you speak directly through our thoughts to each and every man inside and that we need to latch onto that we need to practice what does that feel like when he speaks to us what does it sound like what does it taste like we need to understand who your spirit is, Father. I pray that you'll help them to understand better when it's your spirit versus themselves, their flesh, or anything else, God. I pray that you'll help them to discern the spirit of the holy living God from anything else to begin with. And then you'll you'll whittle that down to, okay, now is it your soul? Is it the flesh? Is it the enemy? But right now, we just need to know you, God, in the body of church. We need to be able to hear your voice clearly, but I can't do that for them, sir. They're going to have to do that for them. Themselves. They're going to have to sit around and practice hearing your voice. They're going to have to sit around and ask you questions. They're going to have to sit around and wait for a reply and then write it down. I get this impression in my mind. I got this picture that he sent to me. This thought came across my mind. This scripture came up and then they'll realize that you're speaking to them. I pray that they'll ask to be hedged in during this. Hedge me in. Don't let the enemy speak. Help me throw down my flesh while we do this so that I can hear your spirit. I pray that number one out of all of this that we start to begin to hear the voice of the holy living god and then beyond that you start to move them into the spirit realm understanding as you so lead parameterized by where they are by their ordered steps each and every individual life and sir where we need to be where we are in leadership where we need to be humbled and we need to be admonished and reproved because you told me before it's not like i'm not going to give you a revelation i'm going to give you a revelation if you want to talk about what you want to talk about janet we'll talk about that because i want to talk to you so sir i pray that we would as leadership understand that if we're only minded on one thing it may not be because the holy spirit's only bringing forth that one thing it may be because we box the holy spirit in to only hear one thing and that devastated me when you said that you think i'm going to stop talking to them janet because they only want to talk about one thing. No, I'm going to talk to them about that thing. But it does not mean that they're being led by my spirit. It means that my spirit's having a conversation with them about something. But when I lead somebody, I come over them heavily like I do with you. And I will get my word spoken of what I have need of. Because my needs are what matter in this earth. My will is what matters. So, Father, when you told me that we can box you in by only being minded on what we want to be minded on. And you'll still talk to us about us. That frightened me. 
in a good way. It put the holy fear of God over me that God isn't going to stop talking to me just because I want to talk about the topics I want to talk about, but it might not be what I have need to hear from him. It might not be about what he wants to talk about. It might not be what the body of Christ needs. That scared me. It scared me in a good way. It scared me in the way that we can be our own God if we're not careful and be a chosen one and the elect be deceived. I pray that your leadership hears that. I pray that your leadership humbles themselves before you and really asks what you are trying to say about what is most important. Because if they're not even looking at the body of Christ and what their needs are, they're going to not even go there with you about what do you have need to bring forth, God. We have to actually be looking at your body and see the destitute shape that it is in to say, whoa, there's a lot that's needed. What is mostly needed right now? And what you're telling me is reformation to the leadership. You're reminding me right now. Remember what I told you in 2020? Get ready for a regeneration of an apostolic reformation to this adulterous generation. Adulterous means you're being led of someone else. That ought to frighten all of us, Father. And I pray that the gravity of this message goes forth and that the Holy Spirit gets his will done in the proper correction of those that he loves and leads them in your ways, Father God.